we are about to discuss IR filter design. IR filters can be designed uh, using two methods. So one is analog filter design, the other one is direct method of designing a filter. So in case of uh, uh, the first approach, a digital filter can be designed based on its equivalent analog filter. So whatever specification we describe for digital filter, it is designed based on the analog equivalent specification. So that is what we do in the analog uh, filter design. And analog filter design is de uh, designed first for the equivalent analog specifications. The same thing what I expressed here, the analog filter is designed with the equivalent analog specifications for the given digital specification. So that is what we do whenever we consider analog filter design. So here we just consider a concept of frequency transformations. So by using a concept of frequency transformations, we can consider a digital filter or we can get the response of a digital filter using the analog specifications. So that is what we consider as a frequency transformation process. So this is just a response of a low pass filter, so which has got a pass band ripple, stop band attenuation, transition width, and this is a response of the filter. So this describes the pass band, and this describes the stop band of a filter. Then the specification of filter, if I consider, it includes a pass band and stop band ripples, and it is expressed in decibels. And pass band and stop band frequencies in radians per second. So this is what the specifications of the filter is used in the designing process. So next is the process of decimation and interpolation. So if I consider a process of decimation and interpolation, it is just altering the sampling rate of any given sequence. So if I consider any given sequence say x of n have some samples, uh, maybe around 100 samples. So we are going to alter the sampling rate of that sequence. So by either decreasing the sampling rate or by increasing the sampling rate. So we have two process involved in this. One is called as decimation, one is called as interpolation. Whereas the decimation is nothing but decreasing the sampling rate without violating the sampling theorem. So whatever sampling theorem we have discussed earlier, the concept of Nyquist sampling rate or Nyquist rate, so that is considered here. So interpolation is the next one where the sampling rate is increased. In the decimation, the sampling rate is decreased without violating the sampling theorem. So whatever action is performed like uh, decreasing the sampling rate or increasing the sampling rate, it should never affect the sampling process. So interpolation increases the sampling rate of a sequence. So that is what we consider in decimation and interpolation basic idea or basic concept. Next, decimation is the process of dropping the samples. So what we normally do in decreasing the sampling rate is we are going to drop the number of samples, but that should not violate the sampling theorem. So that is a process of decimation. We are going to remove certain samples from a sequence of samples, or we are going to drop some of the samples in a given set of samples, which represents a particular signal. So the factor is going to be considered for a decimation and that is considered as a decimation factor. So a signal is decimated. It means the signal sampling rate is decreased and that is done by using a decimation factor. And decimation factor for the decimation process is denoted by capital M. So you can see this, this is a decimation factor. And if I consider the representation of decimation process in the form of a mathematical equation, it is y of m is equal to w m into m, where m represents the decimation factor. So this is what we consider under decimation factor, which is equal to summation of k is equal to minus infinity. The signal may be from minus infinity to plus infinity, dk into x of m m minus k. Okay, so that is what we consider in the decimation process. 
if I look into a concept of decimation, so this is Wn which is equal to summation k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity bk into x of n minus k. So here we can see that the input signal specified is x of n and the decimation is done by passing the sample through a down sampler. So the down sampler what we are using here is used to perform a decimation process with a decimation factor m resulting in the decimated sequence y of n that is just by dropping some of the samples in a given sequence. So if I look into a problem wherein we consider a decimation to be done. So x of n is given in this particular example. So this is x of n which has got a set of samples and it is to be decimated by a factor of 2. So m is given which is a decimation factor. Decimation factor is given which is equal to 2 here in the given prop in the problem. Let the filtered sequence be omega w of n. So this is the filter output what we have considered as w of n. So this is the filtered output and this is the sequence of the filtered output. Now we have to determine what is the decimated sequence either it is y of m or y of n. So here we have considered the sequence which is the output of the filter that is omega n or w n and input to the filter which is x of n that is these values or these samples and the decimated factor is 2 the decimated factor is 2 so y of m is obtained by just substituting this in the equation or by just dropping the samples with a factor of 2 it means that we can see that this is the first sample in the filtered output so 2.1 is the first sample now look at the second sample second sample is 2 so what we are doing is we are retaining one of the sample which is 2 then we are going to use a decimation factor of 2 it means that 3.9 is dropped from the signal or dropped from the set of sample in w of n so we are getting w of n equal to the second sample 1.5 then again this sample is discarded similarly minus 2.9 is retained and again minus 2 is discarded and minus 1.1 is retained and 0.1 is discarded 1.9 is retained 2.9 is discarded and the next sample has to be retained but there is no sample available in the filtered output sequence hence 2.9 sorry 1.9 is the last sequence so 2.9 is the last sample which is dropped so this will be the decimated sequence of x of n so we get x of n is the decimated sequence which is y of m with a factor that is a decimation factor of m equal to 2. So decimation factor is m equal to 2. If the decimation factor is going to change, the output sequence which is the decimated sequence is going to be changed. Then the other one more example. So let x of n is given and filter sequence is described as h of n and these are the values in the filtered output and it is decimated by a factor of 2. So in the previous problem we saw that the decimated factor is 2 now the decimated factor is 3. So we have to find the decimated sequence. So the output sequence of the filter is nothing but 0 0.2, 1 0.2, 0 0.1, 3.6, 5.2. So this is the sequence which is the output of the filter. So this is the sequence which is given as the output of the filter. Now the decimated sequence is nothing but y of m which is obtained by dropping the samples based on the decimation factor 3. It means 0.2. So first sequence is 0.2. So it is retained as it is. Followed by these two sequences 1.2 and 0.1 is discarded because the decimated factor is 3. Again 
3.62 is the value which is retained as a second sample in the decimated output sequence of the decimated sequence. Then 5.2, 6.77 are the two sample which are to be discarded. And again 8.74 is the value which is retained. Followed by the discussion or the dis discarding 9.2 and 4.94. Again these two values are to be discarded. And again the remaining value is 8.14 which is retained in the decimated sequence. And the rest of the samples are discarded. So this will be the decimated sequence with a decimation factor of 3. Then, so next is about interpolation. So earlier we had discussed about a decimation wherein the it is a process of decreasing the sampling rate by dropping some of the samples in the sequence. So here we are performing a reverse process that is it is by increasing the sampling rate. It is a process of increasing the sampling rate by inserting new samples in between the sample like we are introducing new samples in a given sample. So the input output relation is based on the factor L. It means that whatever uh, output we are going to get as an interpolation output sequence that depends on the interpolation factor L. So this is what we discuss. We consider the interpolation factor which is L and it is given by y of m is equal to summation of k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity dk into w of m minus k. So by using this particular equation I can find what is y of m which is the interpolated sequence. So this is what we consider x of n is the input and we are going to up sample it. We are going to up sample it that is by introducing the number of samples into the set of samples. So that is what we do in the process of interpolation wherein we are supposed to increase the sampling rate and the interpolated sequence is passed through a digital low pass filter resulting in y of m. So the problem if I consider x of n is this and it is to be interpolated with l equal to 3. If the filter coefficients of the filters are given as bk is equal to 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 1 2 by 3 and 1 by 3, we have to obtain the interpolated sequence. So here we have to introduce some values. We have to introduce some values which are zeros depending on the interpolated sequence which is L equal to 3. So we are going to insert the number of zeros depending on the interpolation factor which is L. So the value of L is 3. So we have taken this, this is the first value or the first sample in the sequence x of n. Now w of m is nothing but the interpolated sequence of x of n. So we are going to get the interpolated sequence by inserting two values that is 3 minus 1. That is L minus 1 values are to be introduced between these two samples. So 0 is the first sample, 3 is the second sample. So between these two samples we are going to introduce two zeros. Similarly the next third sample is 6. So again between 3 and 6 we are going to introduce two zeros as two samples and it continues till the last sample 12. So again we are going to introduce two zeros after 9 again two zeros. So this is the last sample in the given sequence x of n. So b of k or bk is nothing but a coefficient which is 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 1, 2 by 3 and 1 by 3. So this is a filter coefficient and this is pointing towards the origin. This is pointing towards the origin. So 1 is b0 and this is 2 by 3 which is b minus 1. Similarly, 2 by 3 which is b suffix 1 where k is taking the value 1. So here k is taking the value 0, here k is taking the value minus 1, here k is taking the value plus 1. So this is for k equal to plus 2, this is for k equal to minus 2. Then 
using the formula we are supposed to find what is y of m so just substituting these values what we get we get y of 0 y of 1 y of 2 so that is giving me what are the values which are to be replaced for 0 in y of n so 0 is the first sample 3 is the next sample so again 6 is the next sample 9 is the next sample followed by the last sample 12 but earlier we have introduced two zeros in this sorry two zeros two zeros in this particular point or in this particular place again here two zeros again here two zeros again here two zeros so these are the values what we obtain after the interpolation so if i consider this these are the samples what we had earlier these are the samples what we had earlier and these are the samples which are the replacement for the zeros so earlier we have replaced earlier we have uh, just introduced zeros depending on l which is 3 so 3 minus 1 zeros were introduced which is 2 zeros were introduced after each sample so that value is obtained now from the equation with the coefficients so these are the coefficients so based on these coefficients we got the values of y of 0 y of 1 and y of 2 which indicates that these are the values what we get y of 0 y of 1 y of 2 so these are the values what we get and which are to be introduced between the samples so this is the interpolated sequence what we get for the interpolation factor 3 with the given value or with the given samples x of n and w of m so this is what we consider for this particular example